Hello, welcome everyone to this actually third week of this course. So, last week I have emphasized that we must get a representative sample. If the sample is not correct, then your an entire effort of say characterization will be of no meaning. So, this lecture I would like to discuss that what is sampling, how it is being done. And so, so, let us begin. So, what is sampling? So, sampling is a procedure by which some members of a population are selected as representative of the entire population. What is the meaning of this? So, suppose you have a you have an ore deposit of 200 million tons and you have to decide that whether we should mine that ore and if we mine what how we should process it. So, what is essential first thing that is in a very first week of lecture I emphasize that it is the contained value per ton. So, that means what is the contained value per ton of your wanted material. Now, how do you know that what is the average metal contained or say any other characteristics of that 200 million ton of deposit which is not yet mined. So, you have to take a if you take few samples which should ideally represent the characteristics on an average of that entire 200 million ton of deposit. So, the procedure which you adapt to select those members or the select those portions of the material which you ensure that that is the true representative of the entire population. So, the subgroup thus selected suppose we have collected the 10 different samples from 10 different locations. So, each sample you collect that is each subgroup you select that is called a sample. So, what is the importance of sampling in mineral processing? Now, as I have said again and again that it is the contained value per ton that means, suppose that is a gold ore. So, in that 200 tons say 200 million tons of deposit what is the average gold content? Now, based on that you think that that I am going to mine it over a period of 10 years. So, per year how much you will be mining? So, actually what is that you will be selling that is per year how much of gold I will be able to sell after mining processing and extraction. And that is your basically the price you will get back against your investment in all these processes like mining, processing, and extraction. So, how much gold I will be able to sell that will depend on the what is the 
average assay content of that material. Not only that, even you have selected a mender processing operation, now you want to improve the relative percentage of your gold. So, each step each upgradation step you want to monitor that whether there is any improvement in my assay content or not. But remember that may be my processing plant is having a capacity of 500 tons per hour. So, it is impossible to do the chemical analysis or assay analysis for gold for the entire 500 tons in every year. Uh, every hour. So, what do you have to do? Now, your chemist might say that I need only 1 gram of sample. So, how do I collect that 1 gram sample which will help you to assess that how much of basically gold ore gold you will be extracting every day. So, that is the assay analysis. Then moisture analysis, sometimes you also want to know that what is the, the moisture content of my material after processing. For example, say suppose if you are working for a coal processing plant, because it is a weight process most of the cases the beneficiation processes are weight. So, some moisture will be entrapped into the surfaces of the coal particles, some moisture will be entrapped into the void spaces created in between the particles, but you will be selling actually the coal. So, you want to the, your client wants to know that how much of moisture you are also selling along with the coal. So, you want to minimize that moisture content. So, in essence you have to monitor that. So, you have to do it on a regular basis the moisture sample the moisture analysis of that sample. So, you have to take a representative sample like that you want to do the size analysis as we have discussed in the last week. So, even for size analysis in a laboratory I said that you need only a small amount of material. So, the small should be truly representative of the your actual deposit or actual material which is in uh, say say maybe in tons or maybe thousands of tons or maybe millions of tons. Then in the processing plant also you want to monitor the flow rates because the flow rates control your productivity of each equipment flow rates of what? Flow rates of solid liquid mixture, because you will gradually get to know that mineral processing mainly focuses on water based separations. So, we have to measure the flow rates also. So, we cannot measure many times the flow rates at the original say pipelines. So, we have to take a representative sample from there. Then various other characterization like you want to do the density analysis of your material, may be radioactive materials whether they are present or not and any other important minerals whether you are that is also associated with your the main mineral what you are mining and whether we can use it as a byproduct. Then in process control like when you are measuring the flow rates, it can be volumetric flow rate, it can be mass flow rate. Then we can have because of the development of sophisticated instruments, we can have on stream analyzers which will give you the assay analysis online, maybe size analysis online. So, based on that we have got a model and simulation tools and through which you want to control the process. So, importance of sampling in mineral processing is enormous. If you are sample is incorrect in all the stages whatever I have mentioned, then your entire decisions or entire calculations will be incorrect. 
Now, I have said that your samples should be true representative of your entire population, easy to say, but very difficult proposition. Because by nature, what you are mining, the mine door, they are heterogeneous. So, when you have a heterogeneous material, it is very difficult to have a representative sample. So, before we go to the techniques of sampling, let me discuss something which you all know probably, but for our recapitulation is the fundamental statistical terminologies. So, there are some terms like accuracy and precision. So, what is accurate? What is accuracy? So, I would like to explain it like this. Like I have got like I am a chemist and I am doing the assay analysis on the sample which has been given to me by my mining colleagues or maybe mineral processing colleagues. So, I have done very carefully the analysis and we have got very sophisticated analysis uh, analyzers. We have taken extreme precautions and we have repeated the assay analysis so many times and what do we do? We try to see that what is that your deviation between each data. Suppose that the first x the first assay I am getting 6 percent, next is 6.1 percent, third one is 6.12 percent, fourth one is 5.98 percent. So, like that we get and then we take a mean of that that is the mean value and we try to see that how much is the deviation from that. So, the more number of samples we analyze the more precise is the data. So, precision means that how much how less is the deviation from my mean value if I repeat the same experiment again and again and again many times. But say suppose I have got a mean value of 6.1 percent of something of some assay. Does it ensure that your data is accurate? Probably not, and it is not because I have done the analysis only on the basis of the small quantity of samples which are given to me. If those samples are not truly representative of my entire population. Suppose, my deposit is 200 million tons and I have done only 20 tests on 20 gram sample that is 1 gram each. So, even though I have got very sophisticated equipment, even though I have performed a test with extreme precautions, even though the data is precise, we cannot guarantee the accuracy. So, what is the accuracy? So, accuracy is suppose the true value is somewhere like 5.4 and your data is saying that the mean value is 6.2 or 6.1 whatever it is. So, that means it is 0.7 percent in the higher side. So, the difference between this that is your mean assay and the true value. So, the difference between the true value and the mean assay is called the systematic error. Please do not confu get confused that it is always in the higher side, it may be in the negative side also. That means, if my true value is 5.4 percent, my analyst might say that the that the mean value of 20 experiments is 4.8 percent. 
So, that is also not correct. So, the question is that is how do we find out these errors. So, this is called a random error on average over a period of time and this error might tend to 0 if we increase the number of samples which I am analyzing. So, the systematic error is nothing but a basically it is called the bias. Now, what could be the bias? Now, say suppose that when I have collected 200 representative samples from the 200 million tons and I have just taken the samples just from the say from only one location and because of geological formation you know that it is not guaranteed that whatever you are getting here and the next site if you start mining you will get the same thing. So, if I have only concentrated here that all the 20 samples I have collected from here only and say suppose all the gold I have assumed that it is already concentrated here, but I am I will be mining here also here also, but they have got less gold content than the original place from where I have taken the representative sample. So, that is a bias that means I am biased to that particular location and that may be the reason for my overestimation. There is nothing wrong with the chemical analysis or the assay analysis. So, the, so the bias is the difference between the true value and the average of a number of experimental values and hence it is the same as the systematic error. Through this diagram I wanted to show you that is the previous diagram and this diagram are more or less same that this is the mean value and precision depends on how much the other data they vary from the say, mean value and if this is the true value. So, this is a showing that there is a systematic error. So, that means it is vast. So, that is basically overestimating if the data is somewhere here. So, that means this is underestimating. So, now how do I ensure that my sample is bias free it is very difficult proposition. So, and in statistical terminology we call it that that the variance between repeated samples is a measure of precision or reproducibility. So, the difference between the mean of a series of repeat samples and the true value is a measure of accuracy. I have already explained that. So, many times what we do? we try to give more emphasis on the assay analysis technique. Suppose, I do the assay analysis technique by assay analysis by weight chemical method which you are probably familiar with that is the conventional titrimetric methods or like that. That is you convert all the minerals into a soluble form and then you go for titration and all this. Now, there may be the human errors. So, to minimize the human errors I have decided that we will have some modern sophisticated instruments and then I started thinking then I have started thinking that my analysis is correct. So, everything is correct it does not matter how accurately you are measuring how accurately you are analyzing your assay, but if your representative sample is not correct 
then your entire effort is meaningless. That is why I have written that minimizing or preferably eliminating biases is more important than improving precision for metallurgical accounting. No point in having precisely incorrect values like here if you see that the data is data may be precise, but that is an incorrect value because this is far from my true value and this is what is called bias. So, that is the most important thing in sampling that how do I minimize or possibly try to eliminate the biases. So, there is a lot of research has been done by many people, the many books are written. This is one of the most popular theory or say equation proposed by G y. So, first question comes that if I have a 200 million ton deposit, what is that minimum weight of sample I should collect to minimize the chances of having biases. So, let us have a look at the GY's equation. So, his equation tells that it is m l divided by l minus m is equal to c d q by s square. Be careful about the units, you have to use the exact units, where capital M is the minimum weight of sample required, that is what we want to know, that is in gram. Capital L is the gross weight of material to be sampled. That means, how much of material we have to sample? That means, what is the deposit? What is the volume of that deposit? And from that out of that, so that is L, out of that how much of minimum weight of sample I have to collect and that is in gram, both are in gram. Capital C is a sampling constant for the material to be sampled in gram per centimeter cube. So, capital C although it is a constant, but this is a material specific constant. I will explain you that what do you mean by material specific constant. Small d is the dimension of the largest pieces in the material to be sampled that is in centimeter. That means, what is the largest particle size I have to sample. And S is the measure of the statistical error committed by sampling. That means, you have to adapt a procedure. So, what is the error in your procedure? That is the small s. So, in most cases, you know, to simplify this, the capital M, that means, how much of weight of sample you have to collect that is very less in relation to the L that is the entire your say ore body which you want to sample. So, I can write because the m is very small. So, I can write L minus m that is equal to L because this is insignificant the same. So, this L L gets cancelled out. So, I can write capital M is equal to C d q by s square. So, this c is capital C. So, now question comes how do I find out this capital C and the s. So, let us discuss about the errors that is very very important. With this diagram what I wanted to show now, so suppose this is your entire deposit that is called a lot that is representing we just assume that this is 
200 million ton of deposit and it has got a assay content of say suppose mu that is the true value. So, out of that 200 million ton my analyst the chemist he wants only 1 gram sample to get the assay analysis done. So, what do we do? We do it by st in stages because your chemist may be sitting at a distance from the deposit. So, we have to consider about the transportation and your how do I preserve the material. So, there is a delay time between your say taking out the sample and your analysis lot of delay time. So, what do you do? First you take a primary sample of a quantity which you have calculated based on the g wise equation. Now, you have followed the three different steps in between that is S 1 for secondary sample that is a S 2 there is an error. So, each stage is whatever you do whatever experiment you do or whatever way you do sample there will be some error. So, suppose in this three stages each each cases the errors are represented by S 1, S 2, S 3. So, what is my goal that x that is the assay it should be equal to mu. So, what is the overall error? Overall error is the square root of sum of square errors. What is the meaning? No, say suppose in this case the error was 5 percent, in this case it was 2 percent, in this case it was 1 percent. So, what will happen? So, the example, so the my total error will be S x is sum of square error and the square root of that. So, 5 square plus 2 square plus 1 square and that is you are getting 5.5 percent error. So, the goal is x is equal to mu. Now, it depends on my on your strategy that whether you are happy with 5.5 percent error or not or whether you want around 3 percent error. So, what I have to do? I have to I have to minimize the error first here and you see that maximum error is contributed from this to this. So, I have to redo my sampling analysis may be I have to take precautions that how do I minimize the errors. Actually we find that analytical processes contain several sampling and sample preparation steps and my personal experience is that that is here the error is most of the cases it is minimum because these days we have got trained manpower and very sophisticated equipments are available, but most of the errors they are coming here. So, this example is telling you that does not matter even if the error here is 0 0.01 percent, but by still my overall error remains more than 5 percent. So, we will explain you a bit more on this that is how do I do it and all this. So, in my next lecture, thank you very much.